The COP27 Climate Conference is a conference where world leaders and lawmakers come together to share ideas on climate policy and how to address the growing threat of climate change. Joining me now to discuss how the government of Canada should address climate change is uh, Terry Dugit. He's a Manitoba MP and Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of the Environment and Climate Change and BC NDP MP Taylor Backrack also joins me now. Uh, Terry, let me start out with you. What does the government of Canada hope uh, to, I guess, get out of the COP27 climate conference and what have been some of the most recent steps that your government has taken to uh, alleviate some of the pressures and, and factors um, that climate change causes? Well, first of all, thanks, uh, Wyatt, for inviting me on your show. My first time. Uh, I understand your show is very popular, so I, I hope you'll invite me back. But uh, so, um, you know, the world is gathered at COP27 in, in Egypt. And, and if you ca cast your minds back to last year to COP26, uh, COP uh, that was very much about uh, setting goals, ambitions and targets. And COP27 in Egypt is about is about implementation, is actually about uh, getting it done. And uh, I think uh, Taylor and others would agree we need to get it done for the sake of the planet, for the sake of our kids and, and grand grandkids, for the sake of our, our economy and our, 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 our climate. And so uh, we're working uh, very hard uh, with other nations to uh, develop uh, those plans and to uh, realize those targets. And there is a focus uh, very much on uh, developing nations and how we can assist them in adapting uh, in recovering from some of the devastation that uh, climate uh, change has visited uh, upon them and also helping them to transition to um, uh, uh, low carbon economies, greener economies and a more uh, sustainable future. Taylor, when you look at what the government has done to address climate change and the ongoing impacts of climate change, um, I guess, what more can the government do to address this growing issue? Yeah, great, great question, Wyatt. And thanks for having me on the show. Good to see you, Terry. I, you know, I think both Terry and I agree that this is an existential uh, issue for all of humanity. And it's something that we need to be acting in a, in a very determined fashion on. Uh, where we disagree, I imagine, is on the question of whether Canada is doing enough. Uh, I had a chance to work on the Environment Committee in, in getting Bill C-12 passed, the Climate Accountability Act, and built into that bill is a, a milestone for 2026, which is around the corner. And um, I think it's very clear that we're not doing enough here at home or internationally to meet the commitments and the ambitions that we've articulated. Now, when it comes to COP27, you know, I think there's increasing dismay and, and cynicism setting in because we have these conferences, international conferences every single year. And yet the, the, the overall trend that we're seeing is getting more and more dire. Um, you know, one of the things that I've noted uh, has been covered by the media is the fact that at COP27 in Egypt, one of the biggest delegations is from the oil and gas industry. These are the companies that have profited so handsomely off the creation of the climate crisis. Um, there are more delegates in Egypt, 600 delegates from oil and gas companies. That's more than, than the 10 most vulnerable countries in the world have at the, at the conference. So when people look at that, they say, are these big international gatherings really moving us forward? I think there's there's a role for that for sure. Um, but what we're seeing out of the conferences is less at the national level, more uh, optimism at the subnational level. From civil society, we're seeing announcements that are promising and, and generate optimism. In terms of Canada's presence there, the, the prime minister isn't even going to this COP. Um, and, you know, I think that's partly because there are some pretty serious questions about Canada holding its oil and gas industry accountable. The fact that it represents 27% of Canada's emissions, and yet we, we've really failed uh, in terms of this government holding them accountable and driving down those emissions and meeting the ambitions that, that we've committed to. So we have a lot of work to do, and um, I think there are some, some ways that Canada really needs to step up. Uh, when it comes to a just transition, when it comes to uh, reducing emissions from oil and gas, those are two things that come to mind. And Terry, what do you make of that argument that um, many opposition MPs and, and many uh, experts are making that the government of Canada needs to move away its dependence on oil and gas, fossil fuels, et cetera, at a faster pace than they're currently doing? 
Well, I don't think I have any argument to, with uh, with that. We know we need to go uh, further and faster, and uh, and that's what our emissions reduction plan is all about. Uh, Wyatt, we've invested since we uh, took office after the Harper government did absolutely nothing for 10 years on, on climate change. So we're playing uh, catch up, but we've invested a hundred billion dollars on climate action, our latest emissions reduction plan, 9.1 uh, billion. Uh, we will be uh, addressing uh, emissions from the oil and, and gas sector. We're going to be putting a cap on emissions in 2023. We will be eliminating uh, fossil fuel subsidies uh, by 2023, two years in advance of other G7 countries. And just, just addressing uh, the issue of who's there at, uh, at COP27. I mean, I'm glad uh, uh, industry, the oil and gas sector, I'm glad everybody is there because it's a whole of society effort. They, they do, as, as um, uh, Taylor has mentioned, have the biggest emissions profile. And so uh, we need to get those uh, emissions down. They need to get those emissions down. They are making record uh, profits and, and they need to put their shoulder to the wheel to work with us to uh, build that clean economy and the good jobs of uh, today and tomorrow. And as, as Taylor mentioned, uh, really uh, help us with that, uh, that just transition, those sustainable jobs. 170,000 people work in the oil patch and uh, that's a significant uh, number of people that we can't leave just high and dry. We have to transition to this new uh, future. And uh, and so uh, I'm glad uh, they're there at uh, COP27. We have the largest and most diverse uh, uh, collection of people, some 335, only a small portion are for, from our oil and gas sector. But I'm, I'm glad it's a diverse uh, group because uh, it is a whole of society effort. And Taylor, do you think the government is moving at a quick enough rate to reduce its dependence on oil and gas? And how can the government speed up that process? Because obviously that's something that you mentioned you think needs to happen. Yeah, well, the math doesn't lie. And we need to, you know, to meet the government's commitments, the government needs to reduce Canada's emissions by 20% in the next four years. That's a, a very ambitious, going to require ambition and aggressive action. Um, and the reality is, is that there are certain sectors where we're actually seeing emissions increase. And that's the thing that's troubling. You can't make something go down and go up at the same time. We, we've got to pick a lane on this. And, you know, the troubling thing is, is that the oil and gas sector is making uh, money hand over fist and they're not reinvesting that money to the degree that's necessary in driving down emissions. Now, Terry mentioned uh, workers in the oil and gas sector, and that is absolutely, uh, you know, one of our top concerns that we need a government that is leading this transition and, and ensuring that working people aren't left behind. This is a, a topic on which the United States has been leading much more aggressively than Canada has with its Inflation Reduction Act. Some of the things that we see in that legislation when it comes to energy dependent communities, when it comes to uh, industrial policy and ensuring that, you know, the government is investing in the transition, whether it's uh, the production of batteries for electric vehicles, whether it's uh, solar installations, all of these uh, job intensive industries that we need to see ramp up really quickly. They've pulled those levers in a big way. Meanwhile, Canada is kind of fiddling with the knobs and the dials trying to figure out what to do. Um, and our neighbor to the south is really leaving us in the dust. So we need to do more on the just transition and on industrial policy. I think that's a really clear message. I don't think that's something that Terry would disagree with me on. Um, but when it comes to the oil and gas companies, I don't see them leading that conversation. Um, they're making money hand over fist and the status quo uh, benefits them uh, to a huge degree. So until the government actually holds them accountable and says, no, 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 here's the bottom line. You, you know, we, this is what we're going to require of you. Um, I don't see that changing and, and I don't see a lot of, of signs of optimism in that regard coming out of COP and the, you know, the fact that our prime minister isn't there to really deliver that message to the companies who are there, I think, um, really, really speaks volumes, but, uh, we got a lot to work to do, a lot of work to do, Wyatt. And, um, you know, we need to cooperate whenever, whenever possible, but most of all, we need to, uh, ensure that when our kids look at what's been done, when they look at these critical years, um, that they see that we did what was necessary and that we measured up to our promises. I, I look at my own kids and, and I think about, you know, in 10 or 20 years, 
Uh, are they going to look back on this period of time and say that our generation did what we needed to do? Um, we're not on the path yet. We got a lot of work to do. Okay, Liberal MP Terry Dugit and uh, NDP MP Taylor Backrack, thanks to the both of you for your time. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks.